Welcome participants. Now we are going to move to lecture 3 for week 2. Today the topic is circular knitting. It is more sort of similar to flatbed knitting machines, but fundamentally the only difference is the bed uh, which was flat in case of flat knitting, but now it is going to change to circular. Uh, apart from that, we are also going to learn some of the new machine elements uh, which is very critical during knitting process. So let us, before we start, let us quickly recap what we covered in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, I give more emphasis on the cam track because this is the fundamental principal elements uh, during knitting process because the cam interacts with the cam track which is created by cam system. I also introduced you the cam jacket of single bed flat knitting machines. Some of the knitting cams uh, was also explained in details including raising cams, how their positioning on the cam jacket is important, synchronized which helps the needle to perform certain movement in a certain fashion to make the knitting successful. So raising cams, how it helps in latch opening, clearing cam, it makes sure the old loop is knocked out and also the new yarns are getting catched. In stitch cam, you can see the needle goes downward movements, it starts pulling the yarn, then the latch gets closed and the old loop is knocked out. And finally, the up throw cam, once the job is done, the needle is raised again to go to the similar resting position. So this was the resting positions and again, this become the resting position. And each of these cams is shown in the figure here. And also we explain in details the importance of each of these cams. Now we are going to change the technologies. Um, in this particular lecture, we are going to introduce you new technologies related to circular knitting. So as the name suggested, circular knitting, the knitting is done in a circular fashion. Now the new element I am going to give more emphasis which is called the sinker. In the last lecture also I introduced the sinker word, how the sinker loop is getting formed. But this time you are going to see a new element which is the sinker which play a major role of knitting during circular knitting machine. Let us start. Uh, circular knitting fundamentally if you see the bed of flat bed machines, the slots was there and the needles was placed in a parallel fashion in each of these slots. So you can see here this is the rectangular platform on which slots was created and each slots one needle was placed. To make a circular bed, the design is extremely simple. You just rotate, if you rotate this bed, it will act like a circular. The only difference is if you see the flat beds, both the ends are open, but in circular bed, ends become permanently closed and it it's acts like a circular. So now this rectangular platform, it changed to a cylindrical platform. So here is the machine, how it looks. The schematic you can see here, it's a cylindrical platform and on this cylindrical platform, the slots are created and each of these slot which is called trick, one particular needle is placed. And these slots are uh, separated by two walls which also plays a very important role which I am going to discuss you in next few slides. The only difference is here in flat bed, the needles are placed on a flat surface. Here in circular bed, the needles are placed on a cylindrical platform. So that's why it is called circular knitting. Here is the actual diagram of the machines. You can see here the needles are placed on this vertical slots or the tricks and yarn is getting cast. Fundamentally the interaction of cam and needle remains same or similar as of flat knitting machines. Uh, the needle moves uh, upward and downward reciprocative movements depending on how it interacts with the cam. So the cam rotates along the curved surface of the machines because of that the needle raises up and goes down depending on the cam track which is there on the cam jacket. So this is uh, fundamentally the interaction of needle and cam I have already discussed in detail so I am not going to give more emphasis on that. Here you can see how it works. So you are rotating the cam on the curved part and because of this the needle is going up and down and making the fabric and the fabric is pulled. You can see these are the 
green colored yarn the fabric is fold from the downward direction so the movement of needle and the cam remain perpendicular so this needle moves in vertical directions and the cam is rotating on a horizontal platform in a circular fashion so this is how the circular bed or circular knitting is designed fundamentally there are two different things in the circular knitting also in one of the circular knitting technologies we have sinker element which is present and in another one which you just saw the video in the previous slides is without sinker so sinker is uh, one of the major element which is required on the machines to do the knitting especially in case of circular knitting sinker is also very important in warp knitting once we introduce you warp knitting technologies there you will get to understand the role of sinker but in circular knitting sinker become extremely popular and most of the knitting products especially hoisery they have uh, this type of sinker based machine so sinker is no doubt one of the key element in knitting technology so we need to understand the functioning of sinker element extremely well so that uh, it will help you to understand the knitting process let's see uh, i have the small videos of running two machines simultaneously so with sinker at this moment you would not be able to properly observe how the sinker is happening but um, but at least i will try you can see here uh, there is something going inside and coming out so this part is the sinker part which goes inside and come outside and the vertical directions the needle is doing the actions we are going to understand these particular motions more in detail once we introduce to you the sinker elements the other machines in circular knitting is based on without sinker so here you can see there is no sinker elements only needles is going up and down and cam is doing its role so in sinker similar to the needle which is going up and down sinker is also doing the reciprocative movements perpendicular to the needle direction so that's the fundamental difference uh, between with sinker machines and without sinker machines so two elements are simultaneously play an important role in loop formation without sinker only needle is sufficient to make the loops but with sinker you need needle as well as cam in a proper fashion here you can see only the needle is going up and down so most of the machines in circular knitting is based on sinker so in this particular lecture i am going to prioritize mostly on these type of machines where there is a sinker attached on the circular knitting machine needle sinker movements so let's see how uh, it looks so you can see here the needle if you see the schematic each needle is placed between two sinker elements on this photo also if you try to observe these are the sinker elements and between each sinker elements one needle is projected upward if you try to enlarge this part it will look like this so needles are placed along the circumference in a vertical trick and sinker are placed along radial directions okay between two sinkers one needle is projected upward and these two elements does perform the reciprocative movements during knitting process which we are going to understand in detail so the needle moves upward movements while the sinker moves in the radial direction so it comes out and goes inside on the cylindrical platform along the radius so you can see here the direction is also shown in the arrow and the direction of needle is in the vertical direction and the sinker is going in the radial directions this is the actual sinker elements which you can see there are lot of sinker designs are there but at this moment i have just one photos with me so if you try to observe this sinker elements there are certain parts of this sinker similar to the latch needle where hook latch there are so many important elements of the latch needle which helps in knitting process sinker also have very important elements which helps in knitting process so the first one is the butt so similar to the butt of the latch needle which do the reciprocative movements in upward and downward directions 
sinker also doing a kind of reciprocative movement. So, you can see here the sinker is doing a kind of reciprocative movement and this is only possible with the help of butt. So, this is the butt part at this moment the butt is hiding with my finger. So, the butt part is this part and uh, to do the reciprocative movement naturally we need a cam track to which the butt can follow. So, uh, once the butt engaged with that cam track this sinker moves and does a kind of reciprocative movements. Apart from butt it has certain other elements in its structure. The first one is the nip part you can see here this is the nip part and this wicked part is called throat with the free part and the platform this one is called the belly. So, these four parts plays a very important role in loop formation on circular bed machine. So, let us try to understand this. So, before that let us I have a small videos which you can able to see and observe the movement of both of these elements. So, here you can see the needle is going up and down although the speed is much higher. So, and here you can see in a very slow movement. So, here you can see there is some objects which goes inside and at this moment you can see the sinker part and this is the needles which is going up and down. So, at here this the needle is in the downward position, here needle is in the upward positions and you can see here now the sinker is coming out and at this moment all the sinker is inside. So, this is how it works. I will introduce you all those movements in a while. How this needle and sinker interacts and helps during the loop formation. Let us see it. So, once the needle goes up the sinker moves back catches the yarn. Once it catches the yarn again sinker moves forward so that it holds the loop. So, you can see here uh, once the needle goes up sinker moves back. Once it catches the yarn sinker goes inward to catch the loop. This is how it works. Let us try to break down each of these movement and try to understand the role of each of these parts of the sinker. So, the first thing once a needle is having the loop and needle starts to raise at this moment the sinker movement is forward. Forward in the sense because the moment needle starts to raise on the cylinder it has to hold the fabric. So, to hold the fabric naturally the throat is the right options because between the throat you can hold the loop. So, that is why the sinker moves straight away forward direction so that it can catch the loop. Loop in the sense in this throat part actually it is catching the sinker part of the loop. So, the moment the needle starts raising since the sinker part is fixed in this throat part which will not allow the fabric to raise up along with the needle. So, in the second part you can see here once the needle is raising because the fabric is hold or the sinker loop is hold between the throat part due to which fabric remain in the same position only the needle raises up. So, once the needle starts raising up the latch is opened because of the old loop similar to the flat bed where because the needle is raising up and the and the old loop remain stationary. So, with relative as soon as the needle raises up the old loop interacts with the latch and latch open up. So, you can see here the latch is getting open and this is only possible because the movement of the fabric is restricted because of the sinker. So, sinker definitely has a huge role to play during fabric formation and it is the throat part which is responsible here to catching the fabric during needle rise. Once needle rise the hook is now free to catch a new yarn and new yarn is fed. So, once the new yarn is fed the downward motion of the needle is started, but at the same time since the yarn is going to be catch by the needle you need to pull this yarn in the downward direction. At this moment you have to release the fabric. So, that is why this sinker starts moving backward directions. The reason is because it has to release the fabric so that 
it can catch the new yarn and new yarn can go and fit inside this throat part. So as soon as the needle starts downward movement, sinker is now going in a backward direction and the fabric is almost released, okay. After that you can see here uh, now the fabric is released, the sinker is placed there, the needle is still moving down. So once the needle is moving down, you need support to create sinker part of the loop. So that is why the belly, you can see here this belly is playing a crucial role which is giving support to the needle to make sinker loop formation. So needle is naturally carrying the head and two legs, but the sinker part, the belly is helping to create. And once job is done, again sinker moves forward, you can see here and holds the fabric and this is the resting position of the needle. So you can see here each of these parts, the butt helps in reciprocative movements, the right and left along the radius, the throat which is created by nip and belly helps to hold the fabric, the belly platform and this especially this longer platform actually helps to create sinker loop part of the loop during downward movement of the needle. So each of these parts of the sinker is designed very carefully. Also the movement of sinker as well as needle is synchronized properly so that all of these knitting actions act takes place in a synchronized fashion, in a timely fashion. So the cam design as well as uh, the structure of needle sinkers is properly timed. So here you can see in a slow motion, so you can see once the needle is in the highest position, this is the highest position, the sinker is going down and once the needle is coming down, you can see here, the sinker is coming out. So once the needle is going down, you can see here, the sinker is coming out. So needle is going down, you can see here the needle is going down and sinker part is coming out and it is providing the belly platform. So in summary, if you want to understand the sinker loop in knitting process, it helps in fabric hold up because once the needle moves up, it is holding the fabric, especially the sinker part of the loop to not to allow the fabric to raise along with the needle. It is also acting as a knockover surface because during the downward movements, once the loop is released, obviously it is supported by the belly part. Also it helps to form the sinker loop formation. I hope you will be understanding how sinker loop the name is given because it is the sinker element of circular knitting machines which helps in sinker loop formations. So this is why this sinker loop is named because this sinker element is responsible for creating this sinker loop part. Obviously because both the needle and sinker are playing simultaneously, we naturally need two cam tracks. I am not going in the detail on the track design because obviously in the last lecture we have given sufficient time in understanding the different cams, how they are placed in a certain fashion for the interaction with the butt. As uh, the interaction of butt is defined according to the cam jacket and the reciprocative movement of needle is decided. In similar fashion, uh, the sinker cam and uh, you can see here this is the cam profile for needle and the sinker, sinker butt is here, a similar cam track is designed for the sinker movement depending on its position on the machine with respect to the knitting process. And uh, the designing principle remains same, obviously the track, timing, raising, the distance travel all has to be defined as per the requirement. This is the actual machine how the fabric is created, you can see here the process is extremely fast, uh, it's very difficult to actually understand anything on the running machines, but if you break up each of these process. Obviously it follows the same sequence, the latch clearing, old loop clearing, knockover, catching yarn, all those processes of loop formation follow the same sequence. And to support the needle in this process, 
The sinker also does some kind of reciprocative movements providing support in, in a knockover, holding the fabric. So definitely sinker become an integral part of machine in fabric loop formation. In case of other machines where you do not find sinker, uh, which I showed you also in the last slides, uh, you can have the verge. So actually the end of this trick wall, uh, so the trick is the slot. To create trick, there is two walls, you can see here, in between two walls, this needle is placed. So once needle goes down, it creates the head and leg part, but the sinker part is actually supported by this platform which is the end of trick wall. So this end of trick wall is called verge. I also introduced this word in the last lecture where on the flat bed you seen some projected metallic bar between which the needle was moving in or out. The same principle is applied here. Once the needle goes down sufficiently below, it catches the yarn, it makes the head and leg part, but because this is a hindrance and sinker loop is getting struck here and this is how the sinker loop is created. In absence of uh, sinker on a particular machine, especially in circular knitting, verge actually helps in sinker loop formation. There is nothing new in this, but most of the circular knitting market, 90% of the machines is uh, sinker based machines. So that is why sinker become most popular in circular knitting. Now uh, let us summarize what we learned in this particular lecture. We try to understand the circular knitting, how the needles are placed on a circular platform, the tricks are created. The principle remains same, similar to the uh, placement of needle on a flat bed on the trick on the slot. You just rotate those flat bed, make it cylindrical, you will get a circular knitting machine. But I give more emphasis on the another machines where you have the sinker elements. So this is the sinker part. Sinker actually helps in fabric hold up once the needle rises up. You can see here the fabric is holding up. It also gives a knockover surface because once it goes down, the old loop is released and that old loop is supported by this belly part. It actually sinker helps in knocking off the old loop. Also, uh, once the needle moves sufficiently down, sinker provides its belly to create sinker loop. So that is why sinker loop of a particular knitting loop is given its name because of the sinker functioning. So this is how I am going to end uh, this particular lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to introduce you some new terms, some new terminologies, some new machine elements. Stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you.